We're going to build the foam plate glider, 9 inch, otherwise known as the FPG-9. And this is just like the space shuttle because this, as well as the space shuttle, has elevons and also the rudder. So to begin construction, we're going to start with the template here. What you're going to do is place the template on a foam plate and with a pen start to trace around it like so. And after you trace everything, including going into each of the slots, what you'll have is this. At this point, the students can start cutting out their glider. And I've started this one already. I'm just going to finish it. And this is the part where a lot of students get a little confused because they don't see how this will turn into this. And what you're going to do is cut straight along here, like that. And this piece, which is the vertical fin, will in fact eventually insert into here. To make that happen, what we need to do is cut a little, a little bit more than a slot across. Perhaps you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking out a little wedge right here. I'm going to do the same thing right here along the center line. Cut there and snip up just a little bit, maybe about a millimeter or two in width. If I didn't do this, the pieces would fight and I couldn't get a good right angle bend. And then it just slips together like so. Um, at this point, what I'll want to do is take some tape and I'll want to make sure that this is perpendicular. And if I put tape on the bottom here like this, it'll stay perpendicular. And uh, I need to make sure I have a good right angle bend. You may want to add some more tape to this side as well as the other side. Now, your kids will need to know something about center of gravity. And this plane does need a good center of gravity. That's why we use the penny. And we're going to put the penny right here and tape it down right behind this nose guard. And this flap we're going to fold down. It'll sort of be like a seat belt. And we'll tape this down as well. At this point, your kids will need to cut out, I should say, just snip along the lines. So that's one elevon like this. Here's the other elevon. And you'll keep doing that here on the rudder. like so, and here. I've got a, a finished version right here, and I've colored the elevons so that they're easy to see. And this is something I do in the classroom as well, because a kid sitting in the last row uh, will not be able to see what we're talking about here. The purpose of this lesson is really for the students to experiment and figure out how a plane works. And it's, it's just a good open-ended opportunity for them to see cause and effect. And uh, the way I use this in the classroom as I say to the kids, make the plane work. See if you can get it to go to the left. Which control surfaces will you move to make it go to the left? Which control surfaces do you need to move to make it go to the right? How can you get it to climb? How can you get it to uh, go downhill in a sense? Uh, it's a good observation activity. And the nice thing about it is that it's safe. No one's going to get hurt if they get hit in the head with this. And, uh, there's a lot of um, interesting things you can do. Now that we've built the FPG-9, I want to ask Gordon to come help show how to fly this. Thanks, John. As I mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, this little airplane is a very good replacement for the classroom classic, as we call it, the paper airplane that we all built as uh, students in classrooms. Uh, the paper airplane is uh, uh, very unreliable as a platform for learning anything about control surfaces. This lightweight little model is very useful because it's quite reliable and it retains the uh, trim inputs that you make with the rudder and the elevons. So we're going to uh, at least show you uh, a couple of the different configurations here to, to make it behave in different ways. John? Now, for example, if you wanted this plane to go to, let's say, the right, the left elevon would go down slightly. 
Um, you should know that kids will over-exaggerate this to the point where the plane may start barrel rolling. The way I am now. <laughs> but they'll love that. And uh, so the left elevon down, the right elevon up, and the rudder slightly to the right will ensure that it goes to the right. To have it go to the left, we just reverse everything. Conversely, the left elevon up, the right elevon down, the rudder to the left. Something that uh, will also uh, be experimented with and, and, and provide a lot of excitement in the classroom, especially if you have a higher ceiling, is a loop. This airplane loops very well. And, and to get it to loop, you need to simply straighten the rudder out and give it some up elevon on both sides. And in contrast to what I said earlier, uh, the baseball throw comes in handy here. It needs some energy to be able to, to, to launch it. And I'm sure your students will have plenty of that. Now the second part of the lab asks the students to put the left elevon down and experiment, collect data. What you'll see as a class is that that configuration will essentially uh, give you very wide and varied results. In other words, it's unpredictable. And this is something that the Wright brothers realized. You know, just relying on one control service alone doesn't ensure the direction the plane should go. This is why they incorporated the rudder in addition to uh, their uh, other control services. Your students will have a lot of fun flying the FPG-9. And uh, you can even use this as an opportunity to see what they know. Can they apply what they know? For example, you might say to them, hey, can you get this plane to go to the left? Can you get it to go to the right? Gordon, which way would you like to make the plane Let's fly? Let's see if we can make these two fly to the left. OK. So you can have the kids write about this. You can have them draw little pictures. Um, left elevon is going to be up, right elevon down, and the rudder to the left. And I'll let you call the launch. OK. On three. On your mark, get set. Three. To the left. I think it's a, a great opportunity for kids to experiment, as, as we have said. And uh, you'll be impressed with the amount of creativity they can invest in just one class period in this simple lesson.